Hi, good morning you all So, today, minggu ni uh, We will do our uh, next set Which is uh, trial from Kelantan Okay, so we do paper one today Alright, so look at the paper one we have 25 questions so let's start with the first questions question number one uh, indices and logarithm so we were given with log base xp minus 1 over log base q x square is 0 and we need to express p in terms of q which gives you 3 marks ok for indices logarithm ok remember the rule is always to make sure uh, the base are the same Okay, so now we have log base x and another with log base q and then we have to express p in terms of q. So let's rewrite the equation. Okay, log base x p, so I've changed the equation to equal to 1 over log base q x square okay uh, so we have single term to the left and single term to the right of the equation okay now we okay we just rewrite for log base q x squared okay we change using changing the base so we change the base to the same base as on the left hand side which is log base x so we will have log base x x square over log base x cube ok uh, now our equation uh, both sides are in the same base ok so next is to rewrite the right hand side Okay, log base xp or we simplify the right hand side okay, using uh, reciprocal to the denominator because now we have fraction divide with the fractions ok now uh, we can have log base xq over 2 log base x x Okay, and log base x x is one. Okay, so here we have log base x q over two. Okay, which is log base x p is half multiply with log base x q. Okay, now uh, we use law of logarithm. Okay, the power law. So we have log base xp as log base xq to the power of half. And finally, we can uh, compare the values. So p is q to the power of half can be written as q. So that is the answer for number one. Okay, now we go to the next question, which is number two. Okay, still on indices and logarithm. Okay, now here we have log base AB is M. This is given to you and remember what is given to you is to be used. Okay, so we have log base A, B is M and we have B multiply with A to the power of 2X equal to the cube root of B. We have to express X in terms of M. Okay, now we have two equations. One with logarithm equations and another is an indices equation. So the one that we are familiar with is the indices equation. So from the log form, let's change the equation to indices form okay so for log base a b equal to m 
we can write it as b equal to a to the power of m okay so this is using the theorem now for the second equation we have b multiplied with a to the power of 2x equal to the cube root of b so let's substitute what we have found with the previous equation which is b is a to the power of m into the second equation okay so let's substitute the value of b with a to the power of m so here we will have a to the power of m and then a to the power of 2x and the right hand side we have the cube root of b can be written as b to the power of 1 over 3 so b is a to the power of m and then to the power of 1 over 3 so now we have an equation with all the indices where are numbers with the same base which is a okay so using the law of indices okay we can simplify the left hand side to a to the power of m plus 2x and then the right hand side we will have a to the power of m over 3 okay now both sides single term so the next is to compare the indices because both values are with the same base so with that we can compare the indices m plus 2x is m over 3 okay and then we have to express x in terms of m so we will have 2x as negative 2 over 3 m okay so m over 3 minus m so we have negative 2 over 3 m and finally we can express x or make x as the subject so x will be negative 1 over 3 m or you can write as negative m over 3 so this is for question 2 ok jom kita sambung dengan soalan 3 ok untuk soalan 3 uh, the sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic progression is given by sn equal to n squared minus 3n so this is uh, the function to find sn ok so for a we need to find the value of n if the sum of the first 10 terms is 70 so the sum of the first 10 terms is 70 means we have s 10 is 70 therefore the n is 10 right Okay. Next, uh, we have given with the sum of six term to ten term. Okay, we need to find the sum of six term to ten term. Means, okay, from term six plus term 7 plus the 8th term plus the ninth term and the 10th term so here we can make use of S10 the sum of the first 10 terms and then we minus with ok what's to the front here is that we don't need which is the sum of the first 5 terms ok because from here we have T1 to T5 ok this is what we 
don't need so we only need from the 6 to 10 term so we use s10 minus s5 okay we have been given with s10 is 70 so 70 minus s5 okay using the function so s5 is 5 square minus 3 times 5 okay so we have 70 and then we minus with 10 okay 25 minus 15 so the answer will be 60 okay so this is question 3 Okay, next question four. Okay, the first eight terms of a geometric progression are T1, T2 until T8. Okay, these are the first eight terms for a geometric progression. And then we were given with the sum to infinity of odd terms is 27 over 4. And sum to infinity of the even terms is 9 over 4. So meaning that, okay, for odd terms we have term 1, term 3. Okay, so for the odd term, term 1, term 3, term 5 and term 7 while the even terms will be term 2 term 4, term 6 term 8 and so on so now we need to find the first term and the common ratio ok we have the sum to infinity of the odd terms and the even terms means we do have that the sum to infinity of all the terms will be the addition of 27 over 4 plus 9 over 4 okay because we combine both odd terms and even terms you will have the progressions or the sequence of the numbers itself and then we apply the okay, function as infinity Okay, jom kita jawab soalan nombor 4. Okay, soalan nombor 4. The first eight terms of <coughs> geometric progressions given. And then we were given with the sum to infinity of the odd terms, which is 27 over 4. And the sum to infinity of the even terms, which is 9 over 4. So we need to find the first term and the common ratio. Alright. So let's look at the odd terms. Uh, the odd terms will be the first, third, fifth, and the seventh term. So for the odd terms, okay, the sequence will start with a. Next, it will be the third term, which is a r square, and then the fifth term, a r to the power of four, and the seventh term, a r to the power of six, and so on. So from here, uh, the first term is A, while the common ratio is R square. Okay. Next, we look at the uh, even terms. So for the even terms, it will involve the second, fourth, sixth, and eighth term. So for the second term, it will be A R as the first term and then we have the fourth term which is a r cube and then the sixth term a r to the power of five and a r to the power of seven so on so here we can see that 
the first term is AR for the sequence of even terms and then the common ratio is R square So we were given with the S infinity for both uh, sequences. Okay, so we're going to use S infinity is A over 1 minus R. Okay. Alright, so from the odd terms, S infinity given is 27 over 4. So for the odd terms, the S infinity is A. Okay, the first term is A itself. Divide by 1 minus R square. Okay, the common ratio for the odd terms is R square. And this is equal to 27 over 4. So this is the first equation or the first relation that can be formed. Okay, and then the second information or the second info we have here is the sum to infinity of the even terms. So for the even terms, the sum infinity is 9 over 4. So with A as AR, okay, ratio to 1 minus the common ratio is R square equal to 9 over 4. So this is our second equation. Okay. So now we need to solve simultaneous equation because we need to find A and R. So using ratio, equation 2, ratio to equation 1. Okay, using ratio. So the left hand side for equation 2 is AR ratio to 1 minus r square and then equation 1 is a over 1 minus r square and this is equal to okay for equation 2 the right hand side is 9 over 4 ratio to the okay the first equation 27 over 4 Alright So now we need to Solve Okay, the equation So simplify the left hand side We will be left with AR Over A Which is 9 over 27 so with that, we can find our R, which is 1 over 3. Okay, so we have found R. So next, we substitute the value of R into either one of the equation. So I'm going to substitute R 1 over 3 into the first equation. Okay, to find A. So A over 1 minus with R 1 over 3 square is 27 over 4 okay so a is 27 over 4 and then we multiply with 8 over 9 so 8 over 9 is the answer for 1 minus 1 over 9 so with that our a is 6 So, we have answered question number 4. Okay, next is question number 5. Okay. So, here we have a diagram that shows the graph of quadratic function. Fx is negative x plus 1 squared plus 5. So, the function given is in complete square form. Okay with maximum point negative 1k all right so a we need to find the value of k next we need to find the function gx which is produced when the function fx is reflected on the y axis okay 
So let's answer A, the value of K. So from the graph, we can see that K is the Y value for the maximum point for the function of Fx. So from the complete square form, okay, we can straightly identify K is 5. Okay, so K shows the maximum value of function fx. Okay, next we need to find function gx where gx is produced when the function fx is reflected on the y axis. So, when the graph is reflected on the y axis, okay, so we can have okay, the y value is still the same, okay, k, but it will affect the axis of symmetry. So the original axis of symmetry is negative one, now it will move to one. So meaning that it will affect the value of x. So with that, for function gx, okay, the function now is negative with x is 1. So therefore, x minus 1 square, okay, and then plus 5 is still the same because the maximum value is still the same. So we have answered question 5 with 2 marks. So the knowledge here is that remember to make use when you have okay, the complete square form. So the constant shows you the maximum value which is the value of y okay, for the maximum point. And then x equal to negative 1 will show you the axis of symmetry or the value of x okay so now let's go to question number six now we have quadratic equation which has real roots okay we need to determine the range of values of m Okay, so let's rewrite the equation to general form. So here we have m plus 3 x square okay, minus 12x plus 2m equal to 0. So we need to change to general form. Okay, so with that, okay, we can straightly identify the value of a, B, and C okay, of the equation. So this is the value of A, this is the value of B, and this is the value of C. Because we need to make use of B square minus 4AC, which is greater equal than 0. Because the equation has real roots so it might have one root or two equal roots or okay two distinct roots so we use the discriminant b square minus 4ac greater equal than zero okay so let's run the calculation or the process okay with b negative 12 square minus 4 and then a is m plus 3 and c is 2m okay greater equal than 0 so 1 4 4 minus 8 m square okay minus 24 m 
greater equal than 0. Okay, let's rearrange our equation so that we will have the positive uh, of quadratic. So here we have, okay, simplify the equation. So we will divide with the negative m, uh, sorry, negative 8. So we have m square plus 3m and then minus 18. Okay, so when we divide with negative 8, the sign of greater will be changed to less equal than 0. Okay, because we divide with the negative value. Okay. So, next is to factorize. Alright, so m plus 6, m minus 3, less equal than 0. Okay, what we should do next is, this is uh, quadratic inequality. So, we have to sketch the graph. Okay. To find the range of values of m. So, the graph will be, okay, with minimum point. With m negative 6 and 3. Okay, so we need to shade the region below the m axis because okay, uh, the function is less equal than 0. Alright, so with that, you can see that the value of m is in between negative 6 to 3. So, the answer will be negative 6 less equal than m less equal than 3. So, we have answered question 6. Okay. So, the process is to make use of the discriminant greater or equal than 0 and then to solve the quadratic inequality and Finally, the answer. Okay, question number seven. Okay, this is a uh, linear law. Okay, because we have the nonlinear graph represented by the equation y equal to 3x cubed plus bx. Okay, the nonlinear equation is reduced to form a linear graph in diagram 2.2 with y intercept. 2. So for diagram 2.2, .2, okay, the nonlinear equation will be reduced to form the linear graph okay, with the y intercept 2. Okay, and diagram 2.3 shows okay, a linear graph with the with different y intercept which is 2p minus q. So if you look at the graph, okay, for two point two, the y in the the y axis, okay, will present y over x, while for diagram two point three, the y intercept, okay, present y over x cube. So we need to find the value of p and q. So the nonlinear equation is y equal to 3x cubed plus px. Okay. So for diagram 2.2, we will reduce the nonlinear equation okay, to linear equation. Okay, so the first one is to reduce. Okay, to form y equal to m 
x plus c okay so the first one is to reduce by dividing okay so look at the subject the subject is y over x so the first is to divide with x so now the equation will become y over x is 3x square plus b okay so from here we can see that the y axis is y over x the x axis will be presented by x square okay so we know the gradient is 3 and the value of p okay shows the y intercept so of the graph so from here p is 2 okay Next, to find Q, so we look into the second graph. So the second graph, the y-intercept is y over x cubed. So here we have to reduce by divide with x cubed. So when we divide with x cube, we will have y over x cube, which is 3 plus p 1 over x square. So here we can see that, okay, this is the x axis. And this is presented by the y axis. So with that, we can see that the y intercept is 3. So we have 2p minus q is 3. So we have found p as 2. Next, we need to find the value of Q, which is 1. Okay, so make sure you know how to reduce and then you compare with both, uh, both linear graph given. Okay, so let's answer question number 6. Sorry, number 8, eh? It's now number 7. Now it's number 8. Okay, here we have a graph function of gx. Okay, so this is the graph function of gx. The range of gx for domain 0 less equal than x less equal than 2 is negative 3 less equal than gx less equal than m over 2 so we need to determine the value of m okay looking at the graph okay uh, for domain 0 to 2 so domain is the first set which is the x as is okay and then from the graph you can see that the codomain or the images for 0 to 2 okay, presented by the y axis okay. alright so when x is 2 the value of gx is 5 so here the range Okay, of gx is negative 3 to m over 2. 
so m over 2 is 5 okay so with that our m is 10 okay next we need to determine the function of g inverse x okay the inverse function of g so from the graph okay uh, we can find gx okay function gx so the gradient is 5 minus negative 3 over 2 minus 0 so the gradient is 4 so the function of gx is 4x minus 3 because we have the y-intercept negative 3. Okay, so let's find the inverse of g. So for inverse of g, let the inverse of g that we need to find as y. So with that we have gx sorry gy is x so we have 4 y minus 3 is x so y is x plus 3 over 4 okay so we have found g inverse x which is x plus 3 over 4 okay so for question number so we have function fx m over 3x minus n and then x not equal to 1 over 3 okay so we need to state the value of n and next we need to find m for the function uh, relation given okay so 3x minus n okay shouldn't be equal to 0 because it is in the denominator so let's equate 3x minus n to 0 to find the value of x which undefined the function so the x value is n over 3 and it is given that x shouldn't be equal to 1 over 3 so it means here we have n over 3 is 1 over 3 so therefore the value of n is 1 okay next we have fx uh, for b we have 3 f negative 1 plus f1 equal to negative 1 so we substitute the object of x with negative 1 okay, to the function. So we have 3 m over 3 times negative 1 minus 1. Okay, and then we plus with function f1. Okay, so we have m over 3 times 1 minus 1 which is negative okay so here we have 3m over negative 4 plus m over 2 is negative 1 so let's solve the equation all right so we will have uh, negative 3m plus 2m which is equal to negative 4 okay we multiply the equation with negative uh, with 4 okay so each term will be multiplied with 4 so that's we have negative m as negative 4 and m is 4 okay now let's try number 10 Okay, we have diagram shows an overview of the theme park containing various games. A theme park charges an entrance fee of 45 ringgit. 
and visitors have to pay an additional fee to play each game so the average money spent by 60 visitors shows an unreasonable value of 25 ringgit cool. because it's not logic when your entrance fee is already 45 ringgit but then the money spent by a visitor is only 25 ringgit so there must be a mistake during the calculation so the review found that the team park counter staff made a mistake by deducting the additional fee with the entrance fee for the 60 visitors so we have found the mistake done now we need to find the real average of the money spent by a visitor okay so actually to find the average money spent it will be the sum of the entrance fee okay plus with the sum of the additional fee okay then we have to divide with 60 so that's how we get the average but the mistake done is that the end the entrance uh, fee minus with the addi additional fee that's how they get 25 ringgit so let's find out the additional fee that need to be paid by the customer so for the average of the entrance will be 45 entrance fee times the number of visitors 60 and then the mistake done is that he minus with the sum of the additional fee and then divide by 60 so that's how he get 25 so now let's calculate the additional fee Okay, so the additional fee will be uh, 45 times 60 which is 2700 minus with 25 times 60 which is 1500 so here we have our additional fee the sum of the additional fee will be 1200 okay so now let's find the real average okay so the real average will be the sum of the entrance fee plus with the additional fee so the entrance fee is 2700 so we have to plus with the additional fee which is 1200 and then we divide with the number of visitors okay so for a person so for a visitor the average money spent will be 65 ringgit Kita teruskan dengan latihan uh, yang ke-11, nombor 11. So, di sini, okay, we have a bag that contains 4 white marbles, 3 red marbles and 2 blue marbles that are all the same size. A, if a marble is randomly removed from the bag, find the probability that the marble is not red. Okay. Next, if the first marble removed is not reinserted, then the second marble is removed. So we need to calculate the probability that only one red marble is removed. Okay, so for A, okay, we need to find the probability that the marble uh, removed from the bag is not red 
marble so here we have three red marbles so the number of red marbles is three and the number of non red marble is four and two which is six so the number of the sample space okay of all the marbles will be nine so for a we need to find the probability okay to remove a marble uh, that is not red so to find the probability of not a red marble that is six over nine okay so the answer is two over three okay next if the first marble removed is not reinserted then the second marble is removed the probability that only one red marble is removed okay we need to find the only one red marble is removed so if you look at the tree diagram okay the first takeout will be either red or not red okay and then the second takeout okay is either red or not red and it goes to the next situation so our sample space will be red and red okay first take out second take out both reds or red and not red or not red and red or both not red okay so we need to find the probability okay that only one red marble is removed so here we have the situation of red and not red or the first takeout is not red and then red so for probability of take out the red marble okay so we have three red marbles over the number of marbles nine and then we have the not red marble there are six which are not red but now the number of the marbles in the back will lessen one so it will be six over eight okay plus okay the first takeout is not red marble that is six over nine and then the second takeout is the red marble that is three over now the number of marbles are less than one okay which is eight so the total will be 18 and 18 that is 36 over 72 so the simplest form okay we will have 1 over 2 as the probability question 12 we have a squash team consisting of four men and four women is to be formed from six men and seven women now find the number of ways a selection can be made if two of the seven women are inseparable okay now this is selection so we are going to use ncr so we need to form a team uh, which consists of four men and four women but out of seven women to be chosen um, two of them are inseparable okay so let's form the first team with these two um, inseparable women okay so we need four men and four women means we have six men okay so four men and four women okay for four men we have six c four and then we will multiply with four women okay we have seven women here now we have uh, a situation where we need to choose four out of seven but uh, there are two women 
who is uh, who are inseparable so let's include these two uh, special friends so means that we have to choose them okay in the team so we have to C2 and then we have five women left okay and we need to choose another two so 5C2 okay or a team can be formed with 6C4 okay we need to choose four men out of six men and the four women chosen is not included with the uh, this special two women okay so meaning that uh, all the other four women chosen is from the five uh, women okay so we have six C four times two C two times five C two. That is hundred fifty. Okay, with these two inseparable women, and then without these two inseparable women, we have six C four times five C four. That is seventy five. So the number of selection is two to five. Okay, next uh, we have seven letters to be selected from. Okay, the letters from word uncopyrightable. Okay, there is no repeated letter there. Okay, to form a keyword. So, we need to select seven letters. Find the number of passwords that can be formed. So, here involve arrangement. Okay, so because we are going to arrange the letters. Okay, to form a password. And it must start and end with a vowel. Okay, and the letter in the middle, the letter in the middle of the password must be a consonant. Okay. So, we need to find the number of password that can be formed. Alright. So, here we need to form a seven letters password. Three, four, five, six, seven. With the first... Uh, and the end okay uh, is must be a vowel so vowel and vowel and then the letter in the middle okay must be a consonant okay so we have uh, 15 letters altogether okay we have 15 letters with U O I A E the vowels five vowels and then we have ten consonants okay so let's try to use multiplication rule so in the first place Okay, it should be a vowel so we have five vowels to be put to the first place and then the last letter is also a vowel so we have put one vowel to the front so at the end we'll be left with four vowels okay and then in the middle okay we will put consonants so we have ten consonants uh, or 10 ways to put a consonant in the middle so here we have another 4 letters okay, to be arranged without any condition 
so we have put three letters okay in our password meaning we left with 12 letters so the second place we have 12 letters next we have 11 okay so next we have 10 letters left and finally we have 9 so this is multiplication okay uh, rule 5 times 12 times 11 times 10 times 10 times 9 times 4 okay so we have 2 3 7 6 okay ways to form the password Okay. So another way. Okay, another method is that uh, we have five vowels. Okay, we need to choose or uh, we need to arrange two vowels to the front, uh, front and to the end of our password. So this is the second method. Okay, by using NPR. Okay, because arrangement. So we have vowels, five, and then we need to permutation two, okay? So arrange two for starting and ending. And then we have 10 consonants, so we need to arrange one. So 10, P1. And then finally, we have another four letters to be arranged out of uh, 12 letters left okay so because we have put 3 letters so we will be left with 12 letters where we need to arrange 4 letters okay this is by using permutation so 5 uh, p2 times 10 p1 times 12 p4 Okay, so the answer should be the same. That is two, three, seven, six, thousand. Okay. Question thirteen. So in a dart game exercise, the probability that Ramesh hits the target is p, given the mean and the standard deviation of success respectively is eighteen, and 3 set 10 over 7 so here we need to find the value of p okay we were given with the min that is 18 so the min is n times p this is binomial distribution okay and next uh, we have the standard deviation okay is 3 square root of 10 over 7 so we have the formula on variance okay the variance that is n p q okay will be the square of the standard deviation so with NP is 18 Okay, so we have 18Q That is 9 times 10 over 7 So we can find the value of Q Okay, that is 5 over 7 Alright So next we can find P because P plus Q is 1 so P will be 1 minus 5 over 7 that is 2 over 7 question 14 given the vector PQ 
okay, is k plus 2x plus 4y. If PQ is extended to point R, where QR is hx plus y, we have to express k in terms of h. Now, the line segment PQ okay, will be extended to point R and we have vector QR that is hx plus y okay and we were given with the vector pq that is k plus 2x plus 4y so from here okay we can take note that p q and r are collinear okay so now using the relation okay pqr collinear means we have vector pq as lambda of vector qr okay so we have k plus 2 vector x plus 4 vector y is lambda multiplied with hx plus y can next okay we compare okay so we compare the multiples of vector x and vector y so here we have k plus 2 is equal to lambda h okay and then we have another relation that is 4 is equal to lambda okay so here lambda is 4 so let's substitute into the first equation that is k plus 2 equal to 4 h then we need to express k in terms of h so k will be 4h minus 2 question 15 so we have a sketch of a river with width of 50 meter and the velocity of the current flowing downstream is 2.5 meter per second so now Ahmad wanted to pedal his boat from X to the other side of the river at Y. Okay, so he's going to pedal his boat from X to Y, but his boat was carried away by the current and stopped at Z in 12 seconds. So now we need to calculate the speed of Ahmad pedaling his boat. Okay. So first thing, let's find out the distance traveled uh, by the boat. Okay, that is the length of x z. Okay, so using Pythagoras theorem, so we can find x z, which is eighty square plus fifty square. So, the distance of x to z is 8,900. Okay. Now, this boat will travel in 12 seconds so we can find the speed of the boat okay so the speed uh, of the boat through xz will be Okay, eight thousand nine hundred divided by 
12. Okay. But we need to calculate the speed of Ahmad paddling his boat. Because Ahmad will be uh, paddle his boat from X to Y. So we need to find this. Okay. So now using uh, okay with the current 2.5 and then we have the velocity of xz or the speed to xz so we can find the speed or in other words xy as Okay, the square root of x z square minus okay the current. Okay, now let's calculate. So we will have eight nine thousand divided by one four four. Okay, minus two point five square. Okay, so the answer will be. Sorry, seven point four five two. Now, question sixteen. So, in question sixteen, we have a diagram that shows a straight line of PQ extended to R. Okay, the equation of PQ is given x over h minus y over k equal to 1 so the equation given is in intercept form right therefore from here we can find or identify the x intercept which is h and then the y intercept which is negative k because we have minus y over k okay so a we need to find the gradient of pq in terms of h and k and then we need to express h in term of p okay so for a we need to find the gradient of pq so the gradient of pq okay we are going to use the another formula on gradient which is negative of the y intercept over x intercept so it will be negative of negative k over the x intercept h so we have the gradient as k over h okay next we need to express h in terms of p so in the diagram we can see that r with coordinate p to k is a point on the straight line so we can substitute the value of x and y of r into the equation because it will satisfy the equation of the straight line so let's substitute the x value is p over h okay minus the y value is 2k over k and it is equal to 1 so let's simplify the equation right, here we have p minus 2h is h so we have 3h is p so we need to express h in terms of p 
therefore h is p over 3 okay so remember uh, do not put any notation to your final answer in paper 1 we continue with question 17 so in question 17 we have a curve of y square equal to x plus 4 Okay, intersects the x axis at A and the y axis at B and C. So from here, we can straightly identify the point of A, which is the x intercept of the curve. That is when y is 0, so A is negative 4, 0. Next, B and C are the y intercept, so that is when x is 0. So your y square is 4. It means that we have y as 2 and negative 2. So b is 0, 2. And c is 0, negative 2. Okay, now. Find the volume of the shaded region R. Revolve 360 degree about the y axis. Okay, now. We need to find the volume of the region R when it revolves 360 degree through the y axis. So when it revolves through the y axis, okay, we can see that okay, we have okay, the bigger solid will be a cone. Right? So the region starts from x0 until okay, y0 until y6 okay, for the cone. Okay, how do we get 6? Because 6 is the y intercept for the straight line y equal to x uh, sorry y minus x equal to 6. Okay, so this is the cone with height 6 and the radius Okay, so this is the radius. So the radius will be when the x intercept of the straight line. So when y0 x is 6 and negative 6. So the radius of the cone will be 6. Alright. Okay, the next is you can see that this region okay and then we have to minus with the okay this part so remember to find the volume okay the strategy is the volume of the cone minus with the volume of the curve okay from limit 0 to point b okay so the limit comes from the y axis because we rotate through the y axis okay let's run our calculation so the volume will be the volume of cone which is 1 over 3 pi r square h where the r is 6 square and the height of the cone is 6 and then we have to minus with okay the volume okay of the curve through the y axis so the limits from 0 to point b which is 2 okay now it will rotate through the y axis so you have to make x square as the subject so from here okay we have x is y square minus 4 so for x square it will be y square minus 4 square dy
Okay. So here we have seventy two pi. Okay, minus. All right. Let's expand the function. So we have y to the power of 4 minus 8y square plus 16dy. Okay, so the volume of the cone is 72 pi minus. Okay, now let's integrate term by term. So we have y to the power of 5 over 5 okay minus 8y cubed over 3 plus 16y okay limits 0 to 2 so let's substitute the upper limit and then minus to the substitution of the lower limit so when we substitute y with 2 we will have 256 over 15 when we substitute y with 0 so we have 0 alright So let's minus. Here we have 8, 2, 4 over 15, 5. Or you can leave your answer in decimal numbers. That is 54.935. Okay, you can leave your answer in terms of pi. We continue with question 18. So for question 18, it's, uh, it will be a circular measure question. So now we need to convert 0 0.1312 radian angle to degrees and minute. So for A, okay, 0 0.1312 okay, in radian. So to convert to degree and minute, we have to multiply with 180 degree over the pi. So pi is 3.142. Right. So we will have 7. Okay, from the calculator, we have 7, 30 and then 58. Okay, to the back, to the last or the second units so we round off to 7 degree 31 minute ok next B we have a diagram that shows semicircle center at O with diameter 2H so the diameter is 2H means the radius is H ok Given angle X O Y is alpha, so we have angle X O Y as alpha, and then the arc X Y, so we have an arc of X Y, which is one over four H. So the length of the arc X Y is one over four. H. Okay, so we have R as H. Okay, this is the radius of the biggest sector, or uh, that is OB. Okay, so the radius of the biggest sector ADQB will be H and then we have the length of arc of XY is 1 over 4 H so 
it means that uh, r theta okay for sector x o y okay the r is o x so o x multiply with alpha gives us h over 4 so we have o x as h over 4 alpha okay okay that is information that we get from the given statements okay now we need to find the length of pq in terms of alpha and h so we need to find the length of pq this length all right so pq will be OQ minus OP okay so OQ will be H okay the radius of the bigger sector okay minus OP is the radius of sector X O Y okay that is OX which is H over 4 alpha okay so op is the radius for the smaller sector x o y okay let's simplify so pq is okay now this is all over to 4 alpha so we have 4 alpha h minus h Okay, that will be our answer. For question 19, we have trigonometric function question. So, now we have a diagram that shows two graphs which are y equal to sine 2x and y equal to cos 2x. So, the green graph okay, shows us the graph of y equal to sine to x and the blue colored graph shows us the graph of y equal to cos to x okay so the domain for both graphs is pi all right now we need to find the value of mn so mn are angles of intersection between both graphs so to find point of intersection between two graphs we need to solve simultaneous so here we need to solve both equations okay that is sine 2x equal to cos 2x okay using trigonometric identity okay we can divide both sides with cos 2x so ratio both sides with cos 2x we have sine 2x over cos 2x which is tangent 2x and equal to 1 okay so tangent positive in the first and third quadrant with acute angle 45 degree so the angle of 2x will be 45 degree in the first quadrant in the third quadrant it will be 2 to 5 degree and the next is the second cycle so you have to plus with uh, 360 but we don't need here because the domain is until pi so enough with two angles so next is to find x so divide with 2 we have 22.5 degree and 1 1 sorry okay one one two point five degree okay that is x so m 
M will be the first angle that is 22.5 degree and N will be the second angle that is 112.5 degree question 20 we have diagram that shows point P H1 located at the circumference of a circle so find in term of H the value of cos 70 degree and tangent 140 so here is our 70 degree now from the diagram we can see that the right angle triangle form okay will be with height 1 and the x value h so we can find the hypotenuse that is the op which is the square root of h square plus 1 okay using pythagoras theorem now for cos 70 degree from the diagram we can see that cos 70 degree will be the ratio between the adjacent of 70 degree which is h to the hypotenuse which is op so cos 70 degree will be h over the square root of h square plus 1 Okay, next we need to find tangent 140 degree so 140 degree is doubled of 70 degree so we can use double angle formula here for tangent 140 it will be equal to tangent 2 of 70 degree so remember our double angle formula so for tangent 2 theta we have 2 tangent theta over 1 minus tangent square theta ok so now this is 2 tangent 70 over 1 minus tangent square of 70 so from the diagram tangent 70 will be the ratio between the opposite to the adjacent that is 1 over h ratio to 1 minus 1 over h square ok so let's make it smaller Alright, so here we have 2 over h and then we multiply with h square over h square minus 1. So tangent 140 degree is 2 h over h square minus 1 we go to question 21 so here we were given with h equal to 3x minus 2 and then we have k is x square minus 1 now we need to complete the information in the blank box provided so for a we need to find the first derivative of h so straightly we can fill in the box ok so dh dx is 3 and then we need to the second box is to state dk dx so the first derivative of k so k is x square minus 1 so dk dx is 2x 
and then B we need to find D K D H okay so D K D H okay by using chain rule it will be D K D X okay multiply with D X D H so here we have 2x multiply with 1 over 3 okay because we have 3 as dh dx so dx dh is reciprocal that is 1 over 3 so dk dh is 2x over 3 okay the problem is dk dh should be in terms of h instead of in terms of x we have here so we have to substitute x in terms of h okay from h is 3x minus 2 okay we can see that x is h plus 2 over 3 so let's substitute the value of x in our dkdh that is 2 with x h plus 2 over 3 over 3 so we will have 2 h plus 4 over 9 so we can fill in the box dkdh is 2 h plus over 9 question 22 we have diagram that shows a box with a square base which has a total surface area of 216 cm square so we have square base means the length is x and then we need to find the value of x that makes v maximum okay the volume maximum so given total surface area is 216 cm square so here we have okay we have six surfaces 2 of x square and then 4 of surfaces with dimension xh so the summation of the area is 216 cm square okay so here we have uh, simplify the equation so we have x square plus 2xh is 108 so let's make h as the subject so x uh, h will be 108 minus x square over 2x okay we need to find the value of x that makes v maximum so let's find out what is our v so the volume okay will be the area of the base which is x square multiply with the height so the volume will be x square with h as 108 minus x square over 2x so we have our volume as 54x minus x cubed over 2 okay to make volume maximum means we need to find the first derivative 
and make use of dv dx equal to 0. Okay, let's find the first derivative that is dv dx which is 54 minus 3x square over 2 and let's equal to 0 so we have 3x square over 2 is 54 okay and x square is 36 so the value of x is 6 Okay, question 23. So, Mr. Ramli is a small entrepreneur. He wants to invest 2,000 ringgit in a spice business. So, he is confident that his investment RMY will increase at a rate of 2 multiply with x plus 1 to 1, which x is time in year. Next, find the number of years it takes for his investment money to be doubled from his original investment. So his original investment is 200 ringgit. Okay. And then uh, you need to find the number of years. So we need to find the X value if it takes uh, for his investment to be doubled so the investment to be for thousand ringgit okay here we have uh, the rate of y okay so the rate of y with respect to x okay so from the statement rate 2x plus 1 to 1 that will be the dy the x okay with respect to x x is the time in year so dy dx is 2x plus 242 so we need to find y okay so y is his investment so let's integrate 2x plus 242 with respect to x so the y is x square plus 2 for 2x plus c because this is indefinite integral so let's find c okay so his investment original investment is 2000 so when x is 0 the y is 2000 So the value of C is 2000. So our function will be Y is X square plus 2 for 2X plus 2000. So this is the function of Y okay, for the investment with X as the time. So now the investment will be double. So we have to form the equation of x square plus 2 for 2x plus 2000 and we need to find the value of x when the investment is doubled so the general form of quadratic equation will be x square plus 2 for 2x minus 2000 so let's factorize so when we factorize we have x minus 8 and x plus 250 so x is 8 and x is negative 250 so we ignore the negative value because x is the number of years so the number of years uh, will be x equal to
Okay, question 24. Alright, we were given with the integral from 0 to P of Q dx okay, equal to the integral from 0 to Q of negative P plus 1 dx. Okay, we need to find the value of P. So here we have the integral from 0 to P of Q dx that is equal to the integral of 0 to Q of function negative P plus 1 dx. Okay, so let's integrate. So the integral of Q dx will be Q x limit 0 to P and the integral is negative P x plus x with limit 0 to Q. Ok, now let's substitute the upper limit and we have to minus to the substitution of lower limit for both sides. So the left hand side we have Q times with XP minus Q times 0. Okay. So the right hand side we have negative P times Q plus Q and then minus with negative P times 0 plus 0. So the left hand side we have PQ equal to negative PQ plus Q. So let's simplify the equation. We have 2PQ is Q. So 2P is Q divided by Q which is 1. So P is 1 over 2. Okay, finally we go to question 25. So we have two firecrackers that were launched simultaneously and exploded at their maximum height. Okay, we have firecracker 1 and firecracker 2. So firecracker 1 is represented by function ft is negative 3t squared plus 24t. And then firecracker 2 with function negative 5t squared plus 20t. So ht. Okay, where F and H represents the height in the firecracker explosion in meter and T is the time in seconds after launch. Okay, did the two firecrackers explode at the same height? So give your reason. Alright, so now it involves uh, maximum height so we have two functions present the height for two firecrackers okay one is f and another is h so looking at both functions f and h we have quadratic function so you have a choice here in either using uh, completing the square method finding the maximum height Okay, or using the first derivative and equate to 0. Okay, so I'm going to show you here by using differentiation or using the first derivative equal to 0. So one we have okay, ft is negative 3 t square plus 24 t so let's find the first derivative the first derivative for f is negative 6 t plus 24 and now we equate this to 0 because we need to find the maximum value of t 
okay the maximum value so 40 is equal to negative 24 divided by negative 6 we have 4 so when the t is 4 the time is 4 the maximum height okay so for f4 will be 48 meter it's in meter right oh it doesn't say so meter oh okay in meter okay next uh, let's find the maximum okay of h so the function h is negative 5 t square plus 20 t so the first derivative of h is negative 10 t plus 20 so now let's equate to 0 negative 10 t plus 20 equal to 0 so t is 2 so when t is 2 okay h when t is 2 is 20 so the maximum height for firecracker 2 will be 20 meter okay at second second okay now did the two firecrackers explode at the same height no okay so no okay uh, the two firecrackers okay did not explode at the same height okay give your reason because firecracker one explode at height 48 meter and firecracker 2 explode at height 20 meter Okay, so that's all for paper one of Kelantan. Thank you, guys.